Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone's had a great day, a great start to another beautiful weekend. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about Brothers Karamazov. I'm now starting my little Dostoevsky uh, marathon that I'm going to be commencing, or I already have commenced with Brothers Karamazov, and then I have Crime and Punishment after. If you don't know who Fyodor Dostoevsky is, he is a highly esteemed writer from Russia. Uh, so esteemed that even Nietzsche drew inspiration from him, which is quite astounding, considering Nietzsche doesn't like a whole lot of people. Uh, <laughs> Um, I wanted to read them. I have read, read Brothers Karamazov before. Um, I did make a video a long time, like a while back, at the beginning of this channel. But then I made, you know, but then while making the video, I made the, came to the realization that there's no way that you could compress the entire, the entirety of the impact of the story and all that into a 20 minute video. It's just not possible. It's a very, it's a big book. It's a profound book. So that's, so I'm going to be doing basically what I've been doing with my other books that I talk about here, you know, segmenting as I go along, what ideas I have. And that's what I'm going to do with Brothers Chromosome. I have started it, just not a whole lot. Um, I'm still in the beginning stages, basically. So I'm going to read a bit more before I go ahead and start discussing it. Sorry for this. It's windy, but it's really hot, and there's no way in hell that I'm going to keep these windows up. So... Um, the reason I wanted to start reading about this is because the, the prevailing issue of today's society is a lack of morals, a lack of foundation, a lack of uh, 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 trust. Um, you know, we're separating ourselves, with, the, especially with this postmodern thought of, 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 you know, nothing's real. Like, the, it's, just re it's just blatant nihilism that's going on now. Um, everything is just a power struggle. Um, all the structures that we use to hold this whole society, civilization thing together have now been heavily and justifiably been scrutinized. You know, government, religion, and things of that nature both have been heavily scrutinized as they deserve to. But now we have come to this issue of, you know, as you, you see it all, you see it every day, you see it all around you that we have no morals, we have no values. And while the institutions in place that made those things are reprehensible, the need of those morals are still active. They're still in play. There's still something that's, heavily, that's extremely important to us in order to find guidance, in order to have a plan, in order to have structure, something to hold yourself accountable to. Because if not, you're going to become like a lot of people now, which is basically hedonistic, very materialistic, very individualistic. And I've talked about this before, but it's a question that has been posed against many, but many. How are we going to solve this? How are we going to get past this era of Christian Judeo values being the dominant force? Um, I think we should get away from that for sure. Uh, not in the manner that they do now, even though I feel like a lot of philosophers are retorting nowadays. Um, like, I know you've read more than I. And I know that you've gone to school, but why do you come up with such stupid fucking ideas? Um, it just shows you that just because you go to school doesn't mean you're intelligent or you have any idea what the hell you're talking about. But that's really the big issue. And that's an issue that confronted Nietzsche. That's an issue that confronted Dostoevsky. Was this separation, was the secularization of society getting away from Christian values? But now that God is dead, what is going to make up that hole? What is going to fill that hole? Because we are naturally very religious creatures. We are very abstract and we need that. And that is a question that Dostoevsky tries to answer, especially in the Brothers Kramasov, which is really a critique of Russian society as it became a secularization, as it got away from Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Orthodoxy. And it's a very compelling story, you know. The father is via, uh, Fyodor. Do, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, Fyodor Kaganovich. Is it? Kaga is this? A, is it? Kaga oh my goodness! I'm so, I'm so sorry, but I know the first name is Fyodor, the father, and he has three sons: Dmitri, Ivan, and Alyosha. And those three are, they are very different people. And I feel like they take on three different roles in the story. Like I said, there's a secularization process. And now there's like, okay, so what do we do? How are we going to save the souls of these people? How are we going to go about the world? 
So the first son is Dimitri, or um, just like the father, very, very, very animalistic, very based, very, very um, hedonistic. You know, a man that doesn't believe in God, but, you know, has gone down to their base roots of anim animal without structure, without that guidance, without something to look to, without an ideal. A person that's reverted to their animal senses that is only seeking pain and pleasures because if you don't have a god you can't have an ideal or you can't have the morals that make up that that god right because those morals are basically rules to live by in order to chase that ideal you find that you'll never reach it but it's like i said it's a fucking it's a it's a way to live by and and dimitri is a man that doesn't give a fuck you know very base very hedonistic squanders his money has no direction a very lost individual and then you have someone like ivan which is my favorite character uh, sounds a lot like me actually the more i read it but yeah he is an atheist a very intelligent man a man that seeks reason a man that's very self-conscious of who he is what's his place and, and and you know a man that doesn't believe that god is real you know, like a big portion of the population, a lot of a lot of young men that started getting disgruntled, started losing hope, started becoming very uh, 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 pessimistic on the world. Because if God is dead and humans are all that's at the at the top, you don't have to look very far to realize that humans being at the top of the food chain is probably not a great idea. You know, it's pretty fucking obvious. Um, I'll obviously elaborate more on these guys as the story develops. Like I said, I really don't want to talk too much about the story just yet. Um, it's still early in the works. Um, I want to get past a certain point before I go back at it. These videos are going to be a little longer because it's a very profound book. And I really want to do deep dives on it. And I really want to question things. Um, and then we have Alyosha. Alyosha, another man that sees the world for what it is. He's a very he's a realist as the narrator narrator said. But he's a believer. He's a man that believes that with God is the only way that we're gonna get through this, the only way that we're gonna get out of this chaos and and this suffering and, and, and you know what what's the suffering for? What what is all this pain for? Especially with the peasantry, you know, yeah, the high examples of the peasantry flock into this monastery to receive blessings. You know, those sort of people need a God to find meaning, to find a, a, a reason. Like, oh, I'm suffering because of this. There's going to be hope. And Adiosha is one of those men that became extremely, um, that, you know, once he realized that God was real and there is such a thing as immortality, he went all in and he wants to join the monastery. So a naive boy, but very, you know, he's still to the roots. He's still back, you know, so it's trying to stick to the rush of old and so there's going to be fights and, it, and and it's centered around Fyodor which is their father which is a crazy fucker looks like a toad has massive orgies is a drunk buys property a very a very a man that just cares about his life and cares about the day to day he doesn't he, there's no afterlife that fears him I mean that puts fear in him um, he just doesn't care. He just does what he wants. And he constantly scolds himself. Like, he knows he's doing wrong. But he laughs about it. He's like, ah, I'm doing wrong, but it's, I'm a piece of shit. Who cares? I'm a buffoon. Who cares? Um, I'm just who I am. And probably exhibits the most ridiculous aspects of humanity. And that's him. And it's a com comedic, I guess, satire of it. And he constantly makes fun of himself because he blatantly lies and he says the stupidest stuff and he knows that he's getting caught but he does it anyways and um this is a very interesting story um i hope you know i hope to draw something differently than the last time um it's a very profound book yeah <laughs> i think i already said that before but and the reason i also wanted to read it is because i'm not a christian i'm not a fan of christianity but dostoevsky is dostoevsky's answer to this deviation from God is to find God again, is to go to these morals. And that's what he tries to show in the Brothers Kromosov and among other works. I'm not going to comment on the other works because I haven't read them. And he puts a lot of holes in my argument. And when I read Brothers Kromosov, I'm like, shit, um, you know, we'll get to that when we get to it. But he challenged me greatly and it was very difficult to provide rebuttals to some of his arguments. And that's what you have to look for, right? At the end of the day, you have to 
read things and you have to watch things and listen to things like listen to people watch people read from people that don't have the same ideas as you you know the, that completely diverge of anything but that's how you improve yourself that's how you get better that's how you actually improve your arguments is by looking at other people that are going to put holes in your argument you don't want to be put in a vacuum because no ideas are made and that's how radicalism comes about and that's how you're a dumbass and you think oh yeah my idea is great because i'm listening to a soundboard and everyone thinks my idea is great so therefore if you don't think it's great you're an idiot so you know it's a psychological thing and that's why I want to read Dostoevsky, because he's going to challenge me. And that's what I want, right? I want a challenge. And, and, and maybe I can adopt some of the stuff that I learned to my life and to my philosophy. And that's why I'm reading so many different philosophies. That's why I'll read existentialism, stoicism, uh, really to see what can work for me. What can work for me, what registers with me. And it doesn't have to be something I agree with. Uh, uh, he's a very Christian man. He, uh, he's very religious. Um, you know, the answer is religion to him, and I don't agree with it. But he does make a very compelling argument, and I want to co continue to explore that and see how I can improve myself as an individual with my arguments by reading arguably one of the greatest writers of all time. So this is going to be quite an enjoyable ride. It's going to be a mind fuck, but. Um, one and have it any other way, right? So, I'll leave y'all with that. I hope y'all have a great day. I hope y'all make some amazing gains. Hope y'all progress. And do whatever you need to do today. So when you jot down on your journal or you look at yourself in the mirror tonight, you are satisfied with the day. You know how the day transpired and the results that came with it. So, love you all. Have a great day. Peace.